In this video, we're going to discuss first hop redundancy protocols such as HSRP or Hot Standby Writing Protocol, VRRP and GLBP. I'm gonna start with HSRP because that's the most important for the CCNA. I wouldn't worry too much about VRRP and GLBP for the CCNA exam, apart from having an understanding of how they're different to HSRP. For the CCMP Encore exam, you need to have an understanding of those three protocols. You should be able to configure HSRP as an example, be able to configure tracking and various other options within HSRP. It's also worthwhile knowing about VRRP and GLBP for the real world. So what does HSRP basically give us or what do first hop redundancy protocols give us? Think of the name, first hop. In other words, first router or first layer three device. If you wanna send traffic from a host to a remote host, you're gonna be sending that traffic to your default gateway. At home, that could be something as simple as your home router, something like this. The problem is what happens if this goes down? So you might have a simple router at home and if that goes down or a link goes down, it's okay. You might start going onto the internet using your cell phone or your mobile phone. But in a corporate environment, we wanna have multiple paths. So we wanna have some kind of redundancy in the network. And the best way to probably learn this is for me just to show you how this works practically. And for this example, I'm gonna use Cisco CML, which allows you to replicate networks on your computer. For the CCNA, you can practice using Packet Tracer, but CML gives us a lot more information than what you'd get using Packet Tracer. Okay, so in this topology, I've got a PC, PC1. PC1's IP address is 10.1.1.1. IP route shows us the local routing table on this Ubuntu computer. As you can see here, default gateway is 10.1.1.254. That's very similar to looking at your IP default gateway on Windows or on a Mac. Basically, this is the IP address of the router that's gonna allow this PC, PC1, to ping PC2. PC2 has an IP address of 8.8.8.8. So on PC1, if I ping 8.8.8.8, that works. We have IP connectivity. But if I connect to router one, show IP interface brief, shows us that this is the IP address of the router's gigabit zero zero interface. So basically PC1 is sending traffic to PC2 via router one, and that's fine, except if there's a problem on router one. So let's ping 8.8.8.8, .8 and then on router one as an example, I'll simply shut down gigabit zero zero. And what you'll notice is the pings fail. We're at sequence nine, we don't see sequence 10, traffic is not being sent. PC1 can't send traffic to PC2 anymore. If I go back onto router one, and I no shut to that interface, what we should see is PC1 can ping PC2 again. And as you can see, we went from sequence nine, I'll just stop that, to sequence 38. So a whole bunch of traffic was lost. When the router went down, PC lost connectivity, even though there's an alternate path. So if we look at router two, show IP interface brief, it has this IP address and PC1 could send traffic to PC2 using router two, but it doesn't automatically switch over from router one to router two. To do that, we use first hop redundancy protocols such as HSRP. So HSRP is quite simple to set up. In its most basic form, we are going to specify a group number. You can specify different groups where you can say this router is gonna be the main router for one group and this router is gonna be the main router for another group. In this case, we're using group one and we're going to specify this virtual IP address. So previously, router one was configured with that IP address. So that was the IP address of the physical router. I'm gonna change that IP address now because we wanna use a virtual IP address. In this example, we're gonna have three IP addresses. Router one will have an IP address, router two will have an IP address, and a virtual router will have a third IP address, which is actually the IP address 
that the clients are gonna point to. So the clients are gonna connect to a virtual router, but the traffic is gonna be forwarded by what's called the active router. And then we'll have a standby router. So in this example, router one, and there's an election to determine who becomes the active router. In this example, let's assume router one is the active router. It will forward the traffic on behalf of that subnet or that HSRP group. If router one fails, then router two will forward the traffic. But let's prove that. So on router one, I'm gonna change the IP address to 10.1.1.251. So give it a different IP address. So back on the PC, I'm gonna clear the ARP cache and let's see if it can still ping PC2. And as you can see, it can't ping PC2. I've cleared the ARP cache because I don't want the PC to remember the MAC address of router one. So at the moment, it's not able to ping PC2. So on the router, standby, specify a group number, ranges from zero to 255. I'll specify group one. I need to specify the HSRP IP version four virtual IP address. So IP, and I'll specify 10.1.1.254. I've used the command termmon or terminal monitor to make sure that we're monitoring what's going on. We've been told that the console already monitors and notice HSRP state has changed from standby to active. So if I type show standby, you can see that for group one, state is active, the virtual IP address is this. Notice the virtual MAC address. This is a virtual MAC address for HSRP, and the group number that we've specified is group one. At the moment, the local router is the active router. There is no standby or backup router. The priority is 100, and that becomes important because we can change priorities. The higher the priority, the more likely a router is to become the active router. By default, it's 100. Good number to remember. If I wanna force one router to become active, I can increase its number and we'll do that in a moment. But notice now, before we do anything else, can PC1 ping PC2 and the answer is yes. I'll clear the screen. I'll type IP neighbor. Notice this MAC address is reachable. That is the HSRP MAC address we told that this MAC address is stale. Let's have a look at the router. Show interface gigabit zero zero. That MAC address ending in one FA one is the physical MAC address of router one. Notice the IP address. So PC one is seeing the virtual IP address as reachable. And that IP address and MAC address is what's gonna be used when sending traffic to PC2. Okay, but that still doesn't help us because if router one goes down, we still can't send traffic from PC1 to PC2. So what we're gonna do on router two is do something similar. Stand by, make sure the group number is the same, make sure that you configure the same IP address. And what we should see is the router goes through an election process. It's already learned who the active router is. Standby router is unknown. State is listen at the moment. It's gone to speak. It went from speak to standby. So the state has become standby. Active router is router one. The local router is the standby router. On router one, show standby. Active router is local, router two is the standby router. Now in HSRP, the way the election works is highest priority wins. If the priorities are the same, then typically the highest IP address wins. But in this example, because router one started up without router two being there, it became the active and router two is not forcing itself to become the active router by basically forcing control to itself. So for the exam, the answer is, is that the router with the highest priority wins, but that's not always true. Typically, it's the first router on the segment that goes to the active state, and if another router joins later, this router remains the active router. 
But if they both join the segment at the same time, so let's say they both reboot, they both come up, they're sending messages to one another, then the router with the highest priority will become the active router. Okay, so let's see if this actually works. On router one, show run interface gigabit zero zero. That's the configuration on router one. Show standby gigabit zero zero. This is the group configured on gigabit zero zero, state is active, local router is active, standby router is router two, current priority on the local router is 100. We see something similar on router two, show run interface gigabit zero zero. That's the command that enables HSRP, show standby gigabit zero zero. We can see that the local router is the standby router, active router is router one. Okay, so on PC one, can we ping 8.8.8.8, .8 which is PC two? On router one, I'll shut the interface down. So active state has gone to init. On router two, notice router two is active and on the PC, the pings are continuing. Notice we lost, I'll just pause that. Notice here we lost one ping. So sequence number nine dropped 10, sequence 11 worked. So one ping was lost in the changeover from router one to router two. Now in the next video, I'll talk about HSRP in more detail. So I'll show you how to set priorities. I'll show you how to set up preemption. I'll also show you how to monitor an interface so that an, if an interface goes down, you can reduce the priority of the HSRP router or the active router so that the standby router becomes active. HSRP has many, many options. So we'll look at some more options in a separate video. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like it. Please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel and clicking on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal, and I wanna wish you all the very best.